because I think we can tie fear in to where we could possibly say that people don't fear failing. They feel or they fear uncertainty and failing causes uncertainty. And whether you're going to fail, learn, win, it's all or uncertain. Or whether you're capable. Yeah. Or whether you're capable, yeah. It's uncertainty. Uncertainty creates anxiety. Our brain automatically goes into... It automatically goes into overdrive to remove... Because anxiety is not security. And your brain is hardwired to keep you safe. So it automatically... I would bet that there's scientific research that people that have anxiety, that's almost always gives birth to depression because I would imagine that anxiety, your brain automatically goes into your autonomic system, goes in and starts lowering your levels of norepinephrine and dopamine, the feel good thing to keep you sedentary mm. and don't move outside what is safe. Mm. So you people that are depressed sometimes they are like, Fuck, I don't want to get out of bed. Well, bed safe. Your brain did its job, right? So just do it. Just That's all we need to say. Just give them that. So in this recording? episode of the Sales Wolves podcast, we're going to do things a little differently because... We're going to talk first this and is then how, how. This is how every podcast is... Are we recording? Okay, cool. That's Good. cool. Because this is how every podcast that's a, that's a, actually that's starts. <laughs> this is how every Ow! podcast actually goes we go hey what do you want to talk about i don't know what you want to talk about and then we just start talking and then we say okay let's talk about that so in this episode which is what episode 122 196 it's the old 196 or i think it's it's 122 this is as raw and meta as this one I, ever I was had. i was gonna count how many times <laughs> you were gonna ask and, and her not know <laughs> <laughs> One before she puts a reminder in her phone to be like because and I'm gonna start carving times, it in this table. One of these times you're gonna you're gonna say what episode is this? She's gonna be like 172, and I want to be like woo. <laughs> 122. One. I was right. Were you? Yeah. That's not what yeah. you said. Episode 122 of the Sales Wolves Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler One, Harris, and... 122, <laughs> Joseph, I am Legion. I'm just kidding. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow. Ow. So I guess we can just jump back, right back into where we were. And so yeah. we were talking about, um, really, I guess, where depression comes from for a lot of people. Yeah. And by a lot of people like us. Yeah, like a lot of people, the people that are sitting here. <laughs> We're going to talk about how you guys deal with your depression. <laughs> We're going to talk about all your problems today. Yeah, because we don't have any. <laughs> Dude, I remember waking up. Um, I remember waking up. It was about a year ago, a year and a half ago. No, no, no. Yeah, it was a year and a half, two years ago. And it was just like overwhelming darkness. Mm. And I was sitting there thinking, what is wrong? Like, God, I don't want to get out of bed. Night. No. <laughs> and, and then I realized the power had gone out. <laughs> and it was two in the morning. Um, but uh, so It's always good, step one, to make light of anyone's issues. <laughs> to, to Especially make, when they talk about it. Make good, fun of them. It's always good to make light of their darkness. <laughs> step, four, step one, make fun of them. Step two. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they can laugh at themselves. In between bouts of utter <laughs> d darkness. You're such an ass. <laughs> so, so the darkness. So the darkness. So mm -hmm. I, and it was funny because um, Kim sometimes she would she would be like, you know, when I would wake up this way, she'd be like, "Oh, is your dark passenger with you today?" <laughs> or something. We would joke about it mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, and it 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 came less and less as what I was doing in life as I became more and more successful, but that's not the key. That was not the key to it. Yeah. It's just, you remember me talking about how I woke up and I was like, Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. stuff's too easy. Yeah. I was too secure. And I started realizing the, the, the tie between creating your own pain 
and and choosing your pain and that being your journey Mm -hmm. and life just handing you pain well life had handed me a bunch of pain and i had worked my way through that and out but as i worked my way through that depression was a was a was a very real thing and that's why a minute ago i was saying like i i don't i've never read anything on this or seen any scientific research but i bet you it is there we should probably talk to to, uh dr heiss Heiss, about it um because i bet you somebody that's going through anxiety which i had a lot of it your brain is hardwired to keep you safe like hardwired to keep you safe anxiety fear it uses those things like like if you're going to stick your hand in this burlap sack, sack and that sack is moving around and you think that could be a snake in there, your brain's like, don't do it. Right? It's hardwired to keep you safe. Like yeah. it's hardwired to create fear. Every every human which has sound, it. Which sounds silly, but it's the equivalent to everything else. It's the equivalent to everything. So yeah. so it's the uncertainty. You're not you're not certain that's a snake in there, but your brain's like, could be you could be dead in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. So so that's the same thing when you have this uncertainty out there and and there's this anxiety and fear around the uncertainty because uncertainty is not safe. Mm-hmm. And so I bet you there's scientific research. And if there's not, we probably need to study it that somebody that's going through that anxiety if if they don't walk through it and and, and go through it with action, mm-hmm. right? Because action will prove it right or wrong, right? Yep. Because we don't have a lot of things. You know, like if you have if you have anxiety of stepping in front of a train, okay, don't do that. That's not smart. You're not going to make it if you step in front of it and 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 whatever. Yeah. There's there's smart things. But if you have anxiety of public speaking, it's the same thing. Your brain's trying to keep you safe. Mm-hmm. Your brain is trying to keep you safe. Yeah. And so that anxiety, I bet you it gives birth to depression when you give in to the anxiety. And so that's probably why my anxiety and depression got less and less and less because I, I took action in that. Mm-hmm. And But some days, man, I'm telling you, like that day, two years ago when I woke up, I actually did a podcast. I was, or not a podcast. It was one of the only lives I did <laughs> on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, right. You were fussing at me at the time. And I was like, <laughs> I hate Tyler. I'm going to do a live. But I, but I was talking about how, like, there was no reason that I could find, like, Kids were good. Wife was good. Home was good. Finances were good. Business was good. Like there weren't all this extraneous um, pressures, but I woke up and it felt like I was sitting in darkness. If well, I mean, to me, it's it's the idea of you know we talk about seeking discomfort, and for years you didn't have to seek it. Oh, it was it was delivered to me on a platter, and so you are in discomfort daily but you were putting in action to create the certainty in discomfort. The action, so, what the action does though, the action is just the journey yeah. and the journey just changes you. Yeah. So that the situation that created pain, it is forced to change because you're a different you in a different location because you were taking action. Does that make sense? And so when the discomfort of life went away because of the success, because of the work, because of the things that had happened in that journey, in that becoming a better version of yourself and then becoming a better surrounding through the process. Then I think that was the realization of like, Oh crap, like I'm comfortable. Yeah. And now all of a sudden uncertainty was created, not from discomfort. The uncertainty was created through the comfort, through the comfort, which is, which is another paradigm shift. Yeah. And so then it was so then it would became a process of how can I seek areas to make myself uncomfortable or to bring discomfort into my life that aren't just brought to me. Right. That I can actually go because again I think it's it's the action. Mm-hmm. It's the the effort put towards discomfort whether given to you or caused by you. Mm-hmm. And I think that that action could also just be known as progress. And to me, I think I was talking, I think at GVL hustle or one of the events like progress is the key to happiness. It is progress in any way. It's, uh, it's one step. It's one leap. It's a sprint. It's just any progress is required 
for someone to be fulfilled and happy. That's a fact. Um, you can my take that. Yeah. On Father's Day, I didn't mean to interrupt you, no, but my fine. children on Father's Day asked me something about what was the coolest thing um, I've accomplished or whatever. Like we were just sitting around, all of us sitting around talking. And, and I was like, you know what? I've never gotten the house, gotten the car, accomplished a certain amount of my bank account, built the business to a certain level and felt fulfilled. Mm. Never, not one time. Every one of them felt empty. Every mm. single one of them. Every accomplishment. And they were kind of looking at me. And I went, because what I found, I said, let me put it to you this way. You know how myself and my brother Jake are going to northern Poland to climb Mount Schneska midwinter in nothing but shorts with Wim Hof. We're doing that this coming January. And they were like, yeah. And I said, I promise you when we get back, we won't have any stories about the summit. Mm -hmm. We'll have pictures of the summit, and we'll say that was cool, but the stories I tell you guys mm. will all be in the journey. Mm -hmm. When when have I ever sat around and told the story of our business going from 2,500 applications to 8,500 applications to 30,000, 30,000, 30,000, 45,000, 56,000? When have I told that story and spent more than 20 seconds on the numbers? Never. Yeah. What have I spent time on? The struggle. The struggle, the journey. The journey. And the funny stuff that's happened, really. Yeah. I bet you all have some hilarious stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. When you're wearing nothing but shorts, <laughs> and walking in snow up a mountain, like something weird's gonna happen. Oh yeah, um, it's it's gonna be odd. I hope those guys are prepared because <laughs> yeah. I might die. <laughs> so, but I was telling my kids that I was like, it's 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 always you these journeys in life to a mountaintop. The mountaintop is never that was never the process. The process in between is what changes you. It's where all the fun is. It's where all the happiness takes place. And so that's why every time you hit a mountaintop, you had better already thought of the next mountaintop. You had better already thought of your next journey. And so I think to get, you know, practical with someone that's listening to this, watching this, that... Because they, climbing Mount Schneska is not practical no, for most people. No. In but, but the reality is no shirt. so many people are dealing with uncertainty. Everyone and and that uncertainty is causing depression, and, anxiety, and, and anxiety, and it's causing um, paralyzation. Really, they're paralyzed by fear, whether it's fear of failure, or fear of uncertainty, or fear of failing in front of other people. Um, you know, whatever that may be, that's all uncertain, not safe, life threatening mm -hmm. to your brain. Yeah, your brain, which your, is real. Your ancient lizard brain is yeah. protecting you. Yeah. Right. Which is real. And so yeah. yeah, I would never discount any person that's feeling those things because it is as real as putting your hand inside that sack that's moving around. <laughs> and Yikes. and so it sounds as though what with what we're talking about that the answer or at least the first step is action. It's progress. Mm -hmm. It's doing something. Yeah. That and look, I, I want to take a second before you go yeah. further to say I'm not discounting people that are in such a depression mm -hmm. and that darkness is over them 24 7. I am not discounting your first action being getting your ass out of bed and going to the doctor. Yeah, sure. And maybe you sure. have to take something to mm -hmm. get you to get you to a place where you can really take some action and 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 really start learning about yourself on your journey yeah. and and i don't know i'm not a doctor i think there's so, definitely layers or levels yeah. there's levels to whether it's clinical depression or whether it's situational or whether it's there's so many layers. Uh, yeah i mean there's there's certainly and we're not discounting any level um but i think the most practical thing we can do is talk based on experience sure of of what has happened when we've hit those uh, areas in our life and just the simple reality that nothing is ever solved by just staying in it. Nothing. Like nothing ever is going to be accomplished by staying where you are, that you have to move forward. I remember it was so bad one day I called my mom, which sounds great, like <laughs> mama's boy. My mom was awesome. So I called my mom and I was telling her something and she said, I know I've struggled with that too. And I said, well, what did you do? And she said, I always just put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. 
And I went, oh, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Is that the Winston Churchill? Is it Winston Churchill if you're going through hell? Keep just on keep, going. Just keep going. Yeah, you got to keep moving. So yeah. you don't want to sit in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think it's I think it's an important thing for people to understand that it's normal. Yeah. Um, because I think that's where a lot of the prolonged stages of uncertainty and anxiety comes from when people feel like something's wrong with me. Yeah. Like I went through this, this happened, created anxiety, created fear, created uncertainty. I don't know what to do. I'm the only one that's ever dealt with this or something's wrong with me for feeling this way, or right. I'm inadequate because I'm feeling this way. Right. It's important for people to know that the highest level of performers in the world have dealt with the exact same yep. thing. Like the, whoever in your mind is like, the guy, like the pinnacle of success in whatever field you're in, they've dealt with the exact same feelings that you're yep. feeling today. Uh, and I think there's a lot of encouragement in that and understanding mm -hmm. that it's a normal process, that there's True. nothing crazy about it, that there's nothing silly about it, that there's nothing, um, there's nothing to, um, to hide or mm -hmm. to um, try to cover up yep. or to be fearful of talking to other people about it. Um, but I think that's, especially in a world of, of social media, um, for those that do put out content, you know, it's hard to do that. Like it was hard for me to put that out. You know, when yeah. I was, when I was dealing, you know, with some issues a few weeks ago, it was hard because it's like, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, talking about all this, world. yeah, like, talking about all this, <laughs> you know, trying to inspire and trying to motivate and try to provide tactical value and all this stuff. Meanwhile, I'm going through, you know, darkness of my own and depression and, and things. And it's like, well, you know, you think to yourself, is that somehow going to negate the value that I was trying to provide by showing this human, human side of my life that I was dealing with? And does it somehow take away? And what I realized through that process and, um, through the just messages and talking with people and just feedback is that not only does it not negate it, it makes it so much more real right? because everybody's going through it. Yeah. Like everybody has stuff. Um, and I think that's the biggest encouragement to everybody out there that's listening and watching this, that you are not alone, uh, in any thing that you're feeling. Um, but that the only way Action. you stay there is to stay there <laughs> like like the only way you stay in it and the only way it gets worse is to not take one step and make one bit of progress today and you know what it, a lot of people think that they got to beat themselves up to take action and what i would do what i would if you say say you're a person that's just absolutely can't get out of bed in the morning and you're like I don't want to face this day. This is the worst ever. What I would encourage you to do is take 10 deep breaths. And as you're taking those breaths, see you right where you are and love you. Just be like, man, I love me. I love the me that is laying in this bed and wallowing in this depression. And man, I'm going to get up after these 10 breaths and I'm going to walk to the door and come back. Like if that if if you have never done that, then make it a small goal. Make it a small goal. Mm -hmm. Don't make don't be like I'm gonna get up today and grab the world by the tail and pull it down and shove it in my pocket. That's not gonna <laughs> that's it's it's not gonna happen, right? So so uh, make small goals. I'm gonna get it, walk to the door and 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 tomorrow I'm gonna take those ten breaths, level myself, and walk to the end of the driveway. And and the next day I'm gonna go get in the car and drive to the doctor's office. <laughs> and then the next, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you yeah, yeah. just set these things in place. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn, right? But continual learning, continual progression forward. And you may be that person that that you're at that you're you're at the pinnacle of the position you're in and you know that to go any further you have to really put yourself out there and learn something new well guess what take the first small step today take those same 10 deep breaths enormous breaths fill your lungs with oxygen love the you where you are now and determine where you're going and take the first step 
So, yeah, and I think uh, kind of to close, there may be somebody that's listening to this, and they're like, "Jeez, you know what are these guys talking about? Like, I don't, I don't need, I don't, I don't need this. Like, I'm, I'm good, I'm great." And and I would say that if that's you, then you have an intense responsibility when you are great to look for others that aren't. Um, look around you and see who's struggling. See who you can, you know, tell when they look you in the eye that there's something going on, mm-hmm. and to be a light in their darkness. Sure, um, that to me is is a is a responsibility, and to realize that if if you are someone that has aspirations um, to do great things, I don't know if it's possible to achieve greatness at a high level and not go through some of the things we're talking about. And so if you haven't experienced it yet, I would just say, listen to the words that we're saying, start learning about these things because it's coming at some point. So I mean, point. it's, if, if Everybody it's, hits yeah, it's life. Yeah. Um, so anyways, it's a little bit of a, um, darker <laughs> topic <laughs> darker topic to talk about darkness mm. um but i like the way it started out that was interesting i was like crap bro. You're, you're giving away all the good stuff before we get started right here <laughs> <laughs> but with that guys uh we're always here to help that's the reason why we created this podcast is we wanted to um you know be able to support and um you know provide tactical value to not just salespeople. it's a sales rules podcast but as we've said so many times, everybody's in sales. Everybody. And someone out there right now is going to have to sell themselves to take on getting out of bed. Out sell of bed. themselves on taking that next step. Sell yep. themselves on the fact that I'm not alone and I'm not the only one that's going through this. And so that's why we do this. That's why we're here. If we can help in any way, shoot us a message. Um, I'll respond. I will not. <laughs> I haven't checked messages in in like eight months. Send Tyler a message. But really, but well, you know, unless you send me an email or a text, which is cool. then I always. What's your cell phone? Eight six four 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 nine. Bye. All right, guys. With that, I am Tyler Harris, Joseph Caldwell, and we are the Sales Wolves. Uh, woo!